Welcome to the third lesson of Unit 7 on Logarithms. Um, this lesson explores a little bit further the um, actual attributes of the logarithms. Um, I was going to do a blank sheet here, just so that that's not so distracted down there. Ah, let me find one. Okay. So, comparing logarithm expressions, if we just plug this into the calculator, let me make sure that you know how to plug them into the calculator. Log E, you would plug in, turn it on first, and go uh, clear, log, and it will be second divided sign. You can see the second turns it to yellow, and the yellow is the E, just in case yours is different. Close the parenthesis, and we get point. 0 0.434. So then right here we go log 10 e and we find that it's 1.434. So really important relationship there. Log e plus 1 equals log 10 e. We're going to use these here in a little bit, proving some theorems, um, or proving some, some basic rules, not any big deal. Okay, now we go log e raised to the 10, enter, and we get 4.343. So we can see that log e raised to the 10 is 10 times log e. So 10 times log e equals log e to the 10th. Next one. Log, log e divided by 10 parenthesis closed, equals negative 5, 6, 5, 7, and that's got a point in the front. Now, what you might not realize is that 0.434 minus 1 is 0.5657. Just like how we added to get this 10 times e, here we're dividing by 10, now we're going to subtract 1. So log e minus 1 equals log e divided by 10. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, last thing here. Log e. Whoops. Log e times ln 10. equals 1. Anytime you have two numbers that multiply and they equal 1, they have to be reciprocals of each other. So we now know that log e equals 1 over len 10, or len 10 equals 1 over log e. Okay. How do you know that log e and len 10 are reciprocals? Well, it is because a over b times b over a equals ba over ba, which equals 1. The only way to get the same number on the top and the bottom is if they're reciprocals. Okay? Um, so this actually answers this. That's how we would show them in reciprocals. Now, the next thing that we go through is that the properties of logarithms, remember logarithms from lesson one are inverses of um, exponential functions. So we go through their properties and I just want to make sure that they make sense. Log b, b log base b, b m equals m. What you're basically saying there is what power of b is equal to b to the m? So it would be m is your answer. Here we're saying b to the zeroth power, b to the zeroth power equals 1. 
b to the first power equals b. Make sure and come in and work with me if you're struggling with these flip-flops. Um, really an inverse, or I mean um, logarithm answers what power on the exponent. Now here, product property of logarithms, we see that log b m n is equal to log b m plus log b n. Similarly, in exponents, b to the m times b to the n, we would add those exponents. So this should make sense when you multiply, you add. When we divide, we would subtract b to the m over b to the n is equal to b to the m minus n. So this should kind of be correlating to you with exponents. Log base b to the m to the n would be the same as n times log b m. Okay, and to change base, log c of a, um, I always just look at this one is down below, so it goes down here, and this one is up here. Okay, this is really useful with calculators, so we'll show you the reason for changing base here in a little bit. Okay, now, they want us to recall, using the definition of a logarithm to explain why log 10 equals 1 and ln e equals 1. Well, we know that ln is the abbreviation we use for log e. So if we change the log, the L, len over to log e, we would have log e, e equals 1. Well, what power of e will equal e? It would be the first power. Okay, log 10, how can that equal 1? Well, again, it's log 10 to the 10. Because we were told in the last lesson, when we have log 10, we just write it as log with no number under there. So 10 to the first power equals 10. Use the product property of logarithms to explain why log 10e is one more than log e. Log 10e, see how we're multiplying them? Log 10 plus log e. Because we're multiplying, we add them. Log 10, we just said, is 1, so that equals 1 plus log e. Same thing with the log e divided by 10. We're just going to follow the properties. Log e divided by 10. Now with division, we subtract, so it's log e minus log 10 equals log e and log 10 of 10 is 1. Use the power product of logarithms to explain why log e to the 10th is 10 times log e. Okay, we go log e 10 equals 10 log e on the front, we proved this with the numbers, that it was 10 times log e. Um, the best way that I can think to show you is with the property log b to the m raised to the n equals n log b m. Okay. Use the change of base property to change the base of ln 10 from e to 10. Okay, so we would go ln 10 equals log e 10. Again, we discovered that on the front because ln is another name for, or another, it, it equals log e. It's the abbreviation we use for log e. So now we can go log 10 over log e, and 
and we know that log 10 is equal to 1, so 1 over log e. That's what that is. It's equal to that. So we just proved that. What is the relationship between log e and log 1 over e? Well, let's look. Log 1 over e equals log 1 minus log e and anything uh, to the zeroth power equals 1 so that would be 0 minus log e so that equals a negative log e which is an opposite of log e because this will come out as the exact opposite of every input of that one. Okay? Does that make sense? Whatever value you get for log e you'd have to take the negative of that one. So they are just opposites. Okay. Here we go. Given positive numbers, m, n, and b, what they're trying to have us do is prove the product property of logarithms here. So they're saying that m equals b to p, m equals b to the p, so n would equal b to the q. Just taking the, the logarithms and pulling them back out to prove what they are. Okay, so log b of n n equals log b of b p and b q from what we discovered right there. Now that means that it's log b of p plus q. Now log b of b means that they answer these cancel each other because any anytime you have the same there it cancels so we get p plus q so it's log b m plus log b n because that's what these are equal to. Okay? So log b m n equals log b m plus log b n. Main thing I want you to do is be able to use it. When you come to class we're going to use these in practice and we'll discuss why they work. So now it says suppose m equals n in log b m n what result do you get when you apply the product property of logarithms? This result in this particular case of what other property of logarithms? Okay, so if we have log b m n then we could do because they're being well because they're being um, multiplied we could do log b m plus log b n now one thing that we need to realize here m is equal to n so we can switch that m to m and now we would get 2 log b m so that kind of helps you to see how we can move this what it's being multiplied by to the front um, the property is the power property of exponents of logarithms, sorry Duh. 
and it works when n equals 2. Okay? Prove the quotient property of logarithms. Justify each step of your proof. I want to step to this with you so that you don't end up um, having to see it only in class and not on the film. So we take log b m equals p, just like we did a minute ago, and log b n equals q. So now we know that m is equal to b to the p, and n is equal to b to the q, just like we did a second ago on that one. And this is from definition of logarithms that we can do this, uh, switching them back into exponents. Okay, so now we have log b to the m over n. Okay, it's the quotient property of exponents we're trying to prove. So this is by substitution that we can say log b is b to the p over b to the q. So now remember from your power of, of a power property of exponents, we can say now that log b b p b q is equal to log b b p minus q. Now these b's can cancel um, as can the log because anything to, to that power is equal to that power. Um, so we have p minus q and now if we go back up here p was equal to log substitute it back in log b m minus log b n. So we're just proving that these theorems work. Okay, The last one and then the rest of these practice problems we'll do in class, but the last one is log b m equals p again and log Oh, we don't need to log in on this one. Sorry. So we have uh, equals p, then m equals b to the p. And all that we're trying to do is we're trying to show that log b m to the n is going to equal n times log b to the n. In other words, we're going to try to come down and show how this works in log b m. We have to prove every step of it. So now we plug in the b to the p for the m. So we go log b to the b p. We still have to put that n back in there. Now we can see that the b and the log b um, cancel each other. So we end up with p n. And p is equal to log b m. And it's being multiplied by n and by community property, we know that we can move that to the front. And that's how we write them. Okay. Um, when you get to class, I think that we can finish up the rest of these. So be ready in class tomorrow to go through some of these properties and be able to play the game uh, either shoots and ladders or whatever you guys choose, just to kind of review these properties and know what they are. I'll have some practice problems. Okay, we'll see you in class.